Welcome to the 2018 Rice Street Parade. My name is Sean Filowich. I'm an officer with the St. Paul Police Department. And uh, I've been an officer for almost 22 years. 17 of those years, I've worked the Rice Street area in the North End, mostly in the patrol capacity. And my co-announcer that's with me today is uh, a friend and co-worker, Charlie Redmond. So uh, I've been a St. Paul police officer since 2008. Uh, I'm currently assigned to our downtown beat patrol office, uh, 2001 St. Paul Central grad. That, and I did fail to mention that both of us did grow up in the city of St. Paul. We both have family that still live in the city. I myself attended Highland Park and then uh, graduated from Creighton Durham Hall my senior year, which was 1991. We've got a great day for the parade today. Uh, I was just looking at the weather and it looks like it's 80 degrees. The humidity was a little bit higher this morning, but it's dropped down to about 43%. You can see approaching the Washington Navy Junior ROTC Color Guard. Junior ROTC at Washington Technology and Magnet School. It is a citizenship and leadership development program sponsored by the United States Navy and the St. Paul Public Schools. Now having worked Rice Street for a while, I've come into contact with the Junior ROTC on a number of occasions. And uh, this program provides great leadership and skills uh, for these young individuals that they will definitely use later in life. Following up the color guard, we've got the fabulous 4th District American Legion. Uh, the American Legion was uh, chartered and incorporated by the Congress in 1919 as a patriotic veterans organization. Uh, committed to mentoring youth, sponsorship of wholesome programs in our communities, advocating patriotism and honor, promoting strong national security and continued devotion to our fellow service members and veterans. We see you got quite a contingent of motorcycles behind the flag there. If, uh, maybe we could get... Yeah, we might need to get the kids moved back here just a little bit so we can see what's coming up the road. And as the... Well, Rice Street is, uh, is an area that's it's long in tradition. Uh, like I said, many of my uh, years on the police force, mostly 17 of them have been working the Rice Street area. The unit that I'm in now is called Central District Code Enforcement. Uh, basically, part of my daily duties are I do work with code enforcement officers as they go out to addresses and do their inspections. But my position also involves many hats. We, we do work uh, with the crime prevention in the area. I work with NINO, the North End Neighborhood Organization, uh, attend many of the meetings, the North End Business Association, and also host the Central District uh, Police and Community Crime Prevention and Update Meeting, which is held right here at the Rice Street Rec Center uh, the second Monday of every month at 6.30. So if you haven't made it to that meeting, I would strongly encourage many of you to attend it's a good way to talk with officers that work your area and uh, express some concerns you might have and just for us to get a chance to meet you and express to you some of the concerns that we have in the area. What do we have coming Sean, next here, Charlie? Coming up here is the uh, Arcade Phelan American Legion post number uh, 571, it would appear. Okay. And then uh, got the Rice Street Festival banner coming along. We thank many of you for watching today that, that maybe you were out at the parade, but if you couldn't make it to the parade today, thanks for tuning in. Uh, the Rice Street Festival is actually an annual celebration of our community. Uh, we come together to celebrate the neighborhood, our history, and our diversity. Charlie, a little history. The first Rice Street Festival was actually held in 1910, uh, and it took place on a little vacant piece of land just north of University Avenue. So we've come a long way since 1910. I guess that would be probably fun, what, about a fun 118 fact. years. Probably done on a dirt road at one years. point. 
Well, I can definitely hear a band come in, and uh, from the looks of it, it's going to be the St. Paul Police Band. The St. Paul Police Band is an organization that is uh, built on musicianship, public relations, and traditions. The St. Paul Police Band was founded in 1923 by three St. Paul police officers. The band performs several concerts in the St. Paul metropolitan area and marches in many regional festival parades each year. Members of the St. Paul Police Band include police officers and volunteers. Let's take a listen. There's a retired Sergeant Gary Sokowitz. There he is. On the, sax. the saxophone. And uh, trailing this thing on the on the big drum is uh, downtown beat Sergeant Anthony Nicola. Coming up next is the Rice Street Royalty. Uh, the Rice Street Royalty, Royalty is a rich tradition that has accompanied the festival for several years. Current royalty are saying goodbye at the coronation this afternoon, 3.30, in the beautiful new Community School of Excellence. Please help us say goodbye and good job to our Rice Street Princess, Ann Gallagher, Princess Stephanie Fox, and Queen Alyssa Greith. Behind, uh, behind is our current royalty, uh, five beautiful candidates. We've got uh, Julia Bina, Tierra Gowan, Taylor Steinmetz, Lene Bow, and Morgan Felty. So as I attended many of the, the pre-parade planning meetings uh, and some of the North End Business Association meetings, uh, some of these candidates have actually made appearances at the meetings, and, and they make appearances all summer long, if not all year long, Charlie. And it's just a great opportunity for these kids uh, to do something for their community and, and, and to get out. Uh, so many of them do volunteer work. And it's just a, a good opportunity for them to, to keep busy and, and, again, learn some life skills that are definitely going to help them as they, as they move down the road. Now we have, uh, after the Rice Street Royalty, uh, we might have the Titans Football Club here, it okay. looks like, possibly. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll take a look. I'm trying to see who's coming. I see some young kids out there making their way towards us. I don't know if you've ever watched them practice, Charlie, but that Titans football club, again, just a great opportunity to get the kids involved and get them doing something other than video games and YouTube and, and hanging out on the street. Uh, I know the coaches, I've met several of them, and they, they invest a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to help these kids out and give them, a, give them a positive experience. Prior to the start of the parade today, Sean, I was talking to uh, Coach Kevin. He's behind us here. Uh, cooking up pulled pork sandwiches. Okay. 29-year uh, railroad veteran, coach of the Titans. Oh yeah, and you're right there, the chef. North Area Titans. And we just said it's 80 degrees with 43% uh, humidity, but it's going to be football season here before we know it. Uh, I'd imagine. Uh, I myself didn't play football, but if I'm not mistaken, I think practice has started here rather, rather quickly. There we go, Officer Quast is helping us out with our visibility and our sight lines. Here comes some more of the North End Titans. Titans. And I can hear the kids, they want to be on TV. Everybody wants to be on TV. What do we got here? Be a buddy. Not a bully is what these young people are wearing. Yeah, I like it. a lot of positive messages that these kids learn by, by being involved in some of these programs. And again, it's just great for the for the adults that invest the time. Here comes the Grand Marshal. Sean. The Grand Marshal, Kazua Kong Tao in the Community School of Excellence. Kazua Kong Tao currently serves as the Chief Administrative Officer at Community School of Excellence. It's a kindergarten through eighth Hmong Charter School managed by Hmong American Partnership. The acronym is HAP. 
She provides academic and administrative leadership to over 140 staff and 1,000 students in the areas of educational policies, financial management, personal leadership, and family and community engagement. Ms. Kong Tao has over 20 years in the private, nonprofit, and government sectors with a specialized focus in educational equity. She is a former St. Paul Public School District board member and has worked as an equity and diversity director in the Minneapolis Public School District. She received her MA in Public Affairs from the Humphrey Graduate School of Public Affairs. Looks like we've got some traditional dance happening by these young ladies. Definitely, accompanied by some music as well. Maybe we'll take a listen and... Uh, youngsters. All right, looks like uh, next in line in the parade is the uh, Jerry Bourne Memorial. The Bourne family would like to honor Jerry Bourne, longtime Rice Street businessman who recently passed away. The North End community wants to thank the Bourne family and uh, let everybody know Jerry will be missed. Jerry's uh, Mustang was always very hard to miss. Parked on Rice Street in front of his business. Yeah, definitely. And I, I don't know how long Bourne's has been there, Charlie, but both of us growing up in the city, it's been there as long as I can remember. So it looks like they're passing out some candy. You see the kids running out into the street. Everybody wants a piece of candy. Well, maybe we could talk one of those kids into bringing some candy over here to the table. Well, Sean, you know, I've been off the sugar now for about uh, three months. Wow, that's impressive. I don't think that I could do that. Followed by the Jerry Bourne Memorial, we have City Council President Amy Bren Moen. Amy is the president of the St. Paul City Council and the Ward 5 Council member of Ward 5 is the area that, that we're in right here now with Rice Street. She's been in office for six years and has made revitalizing and re-imaging the North End a top priority during her tenure. She's excited for all the great projects underway in our community right now, and she thanks the volunteers who coordinate the Rice Street Festival for their tireless work to make this a tremendous event. And right after uh, Council Member Brett Mullen, we have Titan, Prince of the North Wind, North Wind on the retired fire truck, lots of kids and adults on that thing. Well, I can tell you, Charlie, that if you're part of the Winter Carnival, that is, you're not just busy for two weeks in the winter. That is a year-long commitment. Uh, these folks that, that uh, donate their time and, and participate in the Winter Carnival, that's a year-long year -long commitment. They participate in many parades. Just an amazing amount of service work as well. Definitely, a ton of volunteer work. Uh, right behind them, you can see we've got the uh, the East Wind, the St. Paul, the former East Winds on this float here. I'd imagine they're probably much more comfortable in this parade than the uh, either the Winter Carnival Grand Day Parade or the Torchlight Parade, where the temperature is, I guess, a little bit cooler than it is today. But the Winter Carnival, that's just a long, long St. Paul tradition. I remember going to Winter Carnival parades. Probably is my earliest memory from my five or six years old. Coming up after the uh, East Wind, we've got the 2018 St. Paul Winter Carnival Royal Family, it would appear. St. Paul Winter Carnival is the country's oldest international festival. Older than that than the Tournament of Roses and has been making mocker of winter for over 130 years. It stated when a newspaper reporter from New York visited St. Paul in January, published that it was unfit for human habitation. Undaunted St. Paul businessmen decided to create a winter fe festival to celebrate the cold and have never looked back. The 2018 Royal Family includes five king guards, four winds, and wind princesses, and is led by Boreas Rex, the 82nd, Tom Leonard, Queen of the Snows, Jilla Nadima, and Prime Minister Christine Quant. Thanks for coming out, guys. We're glad to be here. We're the 2018. Say 
Paul Warner Carnival Royal Family. Followed by the St. Paul Winter Carnival Senior Royal Senior Senior Royalty Court. Uh, that's sponsored by the Senior Royalty Alumni Association, also celebrating 60 years of festivities as a unit in the St. Paul Winter Carnival. The King Winter, Queen of the Northlands, Christina Sarasades, and Prime Minister Shirley Mulkin. The Lady in Waiting is Linda Jones, and the Princess of the Four Winds is Judy Holmquist. And Following up the seniors are the junior royalty. Got the 2018 St. Paul Winter Carnival Junior Royalty Court, Queen of the Snowflakes, Izzy, King Frost, Owen, Princess of the Snow, Lindsay, and Prince of Ice, and Snow, Alex. Charlie, have you ever been to the Winter Carnival Museum in the Landmark Center, downtown St. Paul? There's an amazing amount of history about the Winter Carnival in that place. I, I'm not much of a history buff myself, but I walked through there with my kids and I was actually amazed at the history and tradition that goes into the Winter Carnival and, and past legacies and some of the items in the museum. It's, it's definitely a stop to put on your list if you haven't been there. And anytime you see the St. Paul Winter Carnival Royalty Hall, you can pretty much expect to see the Balkans following up the group. Giving out black V's, a little bit of flame. Yeah, I still remember hiding behind my dad during the Winter Carnival Parade when the Balkans came around. Oh. As I noticed some of them right now. So for those that don't know, obviously the Winter Carnival tradition and with the Balkans, uh, Winter Carnival ends at the, at the finale of the Torchlight Parade is when the Balkans actually challenge King Boreas and his royal court. And I tell my kids every year that if the, if the Balkans win, that's the end of winter, spring is on its way. And uh, I think they've got a pretty good record. I think the Balkans, uh, they're almost undefeated at the end of the Winter Carnival, if I'm not mistaken, which is probably a good thing. Uh, looks like next we've got the Royal Credit Union. We have to be set up directly across from the Credit Union. So thank you to your support for the Rice Street Community Royal Credit Union. And it looks like the passenger, they've got a... Always good to bring the pets out. Bring the family pet out, get them involved in the parade. And there's some more candy if you see the kids. behind the Royal right. Credit Union. If you'll see them coming up shortly here is uh, Ramsey County Commissioner Janice Rettman. Janice Rettman is the current county commissioner representing District 3, which includes Falcon Heights and portions of St. Paul, including the Rice Street community. She has represented this area as a commissioner since 1997. Prior to that, she has represented the community on the St. Paul City Council for over 10 years. And that's your Ramsey County Commissioner Janice Rettman. Following up uh, Ramsey County Commissioner, we've got the uh, Church of St. Bernard and Cub Scout Troop 66. The Church of St. Bernard is a Roman Catholic parish that has been in existence for more than 100 years. They started out as a German parish and now are, are a vital church for many diverse people from different backgrounds. They also have an interest in the neighborhood. Children and are walking with Cub Scout Troop 66. Sean, were you a Boy Scout? I was, I was a Cub Scout, Charlie. I, uh, I, I did not become a Boy Scout, but I still have some fond memories when I was a Cub Scout. Again, it's one of those organizations that just, it's great for the kids. Uh, ma many of the kids that grow up in the city don't have an opportunity to camp or to go to some of the camps that the Cub Scouts and the Boy Scouts provide. And it, it's good to see an organization such as the, the Boy Scouts. Just the amount the of service that they do as well is amazing. Yeah. They've got the truck right there. It looks like they've got they've got a, a tent set up right there in the trailer. Now behind them is the Prodeo Academy. In Latin, Prodeo actually means to advance or go forward. And at Prodeo Academy, they believe in the growth of the whole person. It's a tuition-free college preparatory school that develops students to be critical thinkers, intelligent leaders, and it expands their opportunities to contribute positively Thanks and productively to society. Uh, it's right next to St. Bernard's and we're welcoming kindergarten and first grade. Go get Dave. 
It's ranked a high quality school by the Minnesota Department of Education. Prodeo has achieved great results in Minneapolis for five years, and uh, we're excited to have them here in St. Paul, just off of Rice Street. Quickly following up the Prodeo, we have the St. Paul Public School District. Vote yes for the St. Paul kids is what they're uh, supporting here today. Johnny, Giving there's times, candy. times that I think we have a tough job, but uh, my hat is definitely off to all of those teachers uh, in any any school district, but the St. Paul Public School District. Uh, they do a, a fun, phenomenal job day in and day out, helping to shape and mentor the the youth, which are tomorrow's tomorrow's leaders. There's the school bus, and right behind the school bus, we have uh, South St. Paul Caposia Days Royalty. The queen is Madison Rolio, and the princess is Amanda Salazar, and the other princess is Angelina Crosting. So we thank them for coming all the way up from South St. Paul. Paul to attend the Rice Street Festival today. Looks like we might be missing a princess today, possibly. All right, following at the uh, Capoja Days Royalty, we've got the Minneapolis Aquatennial Ambassador Organization. The Minneapolis Aquatennial celebrated its 79th year in July. Festival founders selected the third week in July because it is the best weather. Aquatennial Ambassador Organization exists to inspire young Minnesota women to achieve extraordinary futures by providing professional development through networking and mentoring. The ambassadors travel throughout Minnesota. They provide educational scholarships for their ambassadors. Aquatennial is thrilled to make their first appearance, Sean, here today at the Rice Street Parade. Oh, their first appearance. Well, we're glad to have them. Charlie, have you ever attended the Aquatennial? You know, it's been years, I think, Sean. Uh, following up that, uh, we had the Aquatennial Senior Alumni Association. Uh, the Senior Alumni Association supports the Aquatennial, Aquatennial Ambassador Scholarship Program, organizing events for seniors during the best days of summer. Celebration in Minneapolis sustains Minneapolis Aquatennial Senior Singers who perform in senior residence. Who was followed by Representative John Choi for Ramsey County Attorney. He works with his staff to pursue justice and public safety. And right behind him is the Karen Organization of Minnesota. The Karen Organization of Minnesota's mission is to enhance the quality of life for all refugees from Burma in Minnesota. It is the first social service agency in the county founded by Karen refugees from Burma. They offer a variety of programs and help over 5,000 refugees each year transition to a new life. Following up the Karen Organization of Minnesota, we have Jennifer Gwen Moore for Ramsey County Commissioner. As we have many political candidates with some elections coming up this year, Charlie, I think the best advice that we can give is go vote. Get out there and vote. Use your voice and exercise your right and uh, make sure you get to the polls and vote for whoever it is that you like. I did notice, Sean, that uh, we've got the Rice Street Ice Cream Social happening today from 2 to 4 at the uh, library, and that's one place that you can register to vote today. Not a bad idea, and I happen to like ice cream. Is that uh, followed? Uh, next, we have the New Brighton Stockyard Days. It was established in 1889. Although they no longer exist, they contribute to the history of the New Brighton community. The award-winning New Brighton float carries the theme with fence rails, saddles, and cowboy hats. Join the New Brighton Stockyard Days celebration, which is coming up August 5th through August 13th. Your ambassadors are Danielle Larson, Sarah Schuler, Sophie Paulson, and the junior ambassadors, Chloe Lunzer, Madison Wallstrom, and Eliana Woodward. So thanks again for New Brighton Stockyard Days coming all the way to Rice Street for our festival this afternoon. Following the New Brighton Stockyard Days float, we have the St. Paul Promise Neighborhood. Uh, St. Paul Promise Neighborhood is an educational partnership that brings families and schools and the community to put children on the pathway to college and career success. Uh, launched in 2010 and housed at Amherst Wilder Foundation, they take a proactive approach to the education opportunity gap 
by focusing early in a child's life throughout childhood and elementary school. Their end game is to give path to pave pathways of opportunities leading to college success for children in Rondo, Frogtown, and the Summer Summit University neighborhoods in St. Paul. Charlie, a little bit of history for you. Did you know how Rice Street got its name? You're gonna have to uh, educate me on that, Sean. Well, I'm gonna do that. Rice Street is named for Henry M. Rice. He was a fur trader and a realtor. He was Minnesota's first delegate from the Minnesota Territory to the United States Senate. Nearby Matilda Street is actually named after his wife. Uh, both of them are buried in Oakland Cemetery, which is St. Paul's first cemetery established on Ax Jackson Street, which is in the North End. Uh, and that cemetery was established in 1853. So a little Fun bit. little historical fact about Rice Street. Yeah, definitely. And actually the railroad played a prominent role in establishing this neighborhood. Uh, many of the original homes were actually built to house immigrants who worked on the railroad shops in the area. Uh, railroad magnate James J. Hill, his mansion is over on Summit, uh, founded the Great Northern Railway and he lived on Summit Avenue. And uh, some say that Rice Street was actually built for this reason, but I haven't confirmed that. But he used Rice Street to travel to his farm, which was currently North Oaks, and that's the end of Rice Street. So a little bit of history for you there. Had a little break in the parade here. Probably let some traffic through. Let some traffic through on Maryland. I think I see a couple, uh, got a couple St. Paul police bike officers coming up. The streets getting a little more crowded, it looks like, Sean. People are, people are realizing that the out. parade's happening. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and this isn't the first event of the Rice Street Festival. Uh, there was actually a, a Camps versus Tin Cups old timer softball game on the 27th, uh, a Mung volleyball tournament at 8 a.m. on the 28th. And uh, yesterday, I didn't have a chance to attend, but uh, uh, Dar's Double Scoop, which is right across the street, uh, put on a, a car show right here on Rice Street. Uh, a couple of the streets were blocked and gave many people an opportunity to come out. And, you know, Kevin Kevin at Dar's just does an amazing job with the uh, community, supports Rice Street. It's uh, pretty impressive what he's doing out of that little ice cream shop here at Cook and Rice. Oh, he definitely does. Uh, hopefully many uh, African great will stick around and join us in uh, the festivities right behind us here at the Rice Street Rec Center in the ball field. There's going to be food, many activities for the kids. I think there's going to be a climbing wall, some bounce houses, uh, other things to, to get involved and enjoy this beautiful day. What do we have coming next, Charlie? Coming down Rice Street, we have the... Uh, is it the... Uh, We'll have to give him a second to get a little bit closer. Like uh, like he said, the cars start to, to back up on Maryland there, and we have to have a little bit of a delay. Well, we've got some dancing going on up in the street, it would appear. I can, I can see a little bit of dancing. I can definitely hear some music. Yeah. So we'll let you just watch for a minute. Let's see who we have coming. If you didn't know there was a parade on Rice Street and you were at home in the neighborhood, you do now. Yeah, I, I think so, I think so. Coming up here, we've got the uh, Green, Century Ele Green Central Elementary School and Does Celebrities. Does Celebrities' mission is to help communities by helping inner city youth avoid t the school to prison pipeline by providing platform through performance arts, tumbling and gymnastics, acting, music, production, and engineering, videotaping, editing, music, marketing, and DJ training that promotes healthy living, positively respect, resilience, and responsibility. So it's a dance and tumbling team. It looks like we're gonna see a little uh, display of what, what these kids can do. Thank you. 
celebrities dance team. The celebrities dance team. The celebrities Charlie, celebrities if you want me to hold your headset, I know you're itching to get out there. The celebrities dance team. The you know, Sean, my, uh, I don't have my dancing shoes on today. All right, we'll let you off the hook this time. Just another great opportunity as, as, as parents ourselves and police officers, I think the key is just to get the kids involved. Get them, whether, get whether it's get sports, them out of the house. dancing, music, whatever it is that, that, that they enjoy, uh, just give them something to do other than find time to do things that they shouldn't be doing. So again, thanks to all the adults and everybody that that makes this possible and just yet another great opportunity for the kids to, to get involved to do something positive. Now, if my information is correct, uh, and here we go, there's just a little bit more dancing. The, uh, the, the celebrity dance and tumbling team is going to move on, and it looks like they're going to be followed by uh, the Red Wing Royalty Ambassador Program. Uh, ambassadors with the Red Wing Royalty Ambassador Program are Mackenzie Irwin, Ashley Noten, and Josie Lapagard. They're all definitely ready to take you under the wing at this year's River City Days Festival, which is August 3rd and 5th. So there's definitely not the last festival of the summer. It looks like we've got quite a few coming up. We've got New Brighton Stockyard Days and uh, the Red Wing. Uh, Red Wing, just a phenomenal area. I was down there myself a little over a year ago, and some, some great, great Same. things to do down there. Definitely some good places to eat. Impressive little float here. Looks like it's got a little water fountain on it in front of the ladies. Oh, yeah, and they're followed by uh, Betty McCollum for Congress. Uh, she represents Minnesota's 4th Congressional District. Uh, it looks at the signs. We've got some uh, Rena Moran for state rep, Aaron Murphy for governor, and uh, Betty, Betty McCollum for Congress. Amy Klobuchar, a United States Senator. Following up the Amy Klobuchar camp, we've got uh, Tina Smith for U.S. Senate. And then uh, she's followed by Chris, Trista Mastis Castillo for Ramsey County Commissioner in the 3rd District. Uh, she's the DFL labor endorsed candidate for Ramsey County Commissioner District 3. Trista is working hard to earn the support of voters in the August 14th primary and the November 6th general election. Her campaign office at 882 Bryce Street has become ground zero for the DFL coordinated campaign as well as community meetings and grassroots organizing. Trista has also adopted the bus shelter on Rice Street to ensure the cleanliness and safety of passengers that are waiting transportation. So again, the message we can send that August 14th primary and November 6th general election, get out and vote. And we've got uh, Still waiting to see what comes up. Sure. Got the big Teamsters semi here. I don't know if they're part of. Uh, yeah, I could definitely the hear the horn from several blocks away. Maybe they'll spare us and uh, wait till they pass us before they haunt that again. If that doesn't bring back memories of riding in uh, mom and dad station wagon when you. Make your fist. Got, and got the fist going bump in the it back up and down, seat, trying to get the, train, the, the semi driver uh, to honk for you. Blast. You know, I've actually, Sean, given thought about when I when I leave the professional law enforcement, getting into the over over the road truck. Good way to see the country. See the country, especially after having a job where you're not confined to an office and, and like to be out on the road. And obviously, we drive every day, so it would be a good way a good way to see the country. Teamsters Local 120, people helping people. And the semi is going to be followed by Adam Yang for Ramsey County Judge. Adam has 19 years of trial experience and is with the Public Defender's Office in Minneapolis. He currently represents 
children and child protection and criminal cases. Adam, his wife and children live in Roseville, Minnesota, and his message to everybody paying it, to tune in is fair, passionate, and value-driven. And here he comes, looks like they've got uh, a blowhorn or some type of a speaker to spread their message. Coming up after uh, Adam Yang, we should have the East Side Lions Harvest Festival Ambassadors. Hello, folks. Just a little reminder, primary is August 14th. Adam Yang is running for Ramsey County. Yes. And there's Adam. It's starting to warm up out here a little bit, Sean. It is. Fortunately, we have this tent here to give us a little bit of shade. I didn't put my sunscreen on today, and that can never ends well. And there they are. Is that the East Side Lions Harvest Festival ambassadors? Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it okay. is. The okay. Harvest Fest parade, 12 p.m., September 22nd. The 2018 Eastside Harvest Festival ambassador candidates from St. Paul's Eastside. They're promoting the Harvest Festival Parade on Payne Avenue, which will, like I said, take place on the 22nd. They have a new event, Taste of Payne, where businesses and restaurants will be having a harvest special. Head over and join the fun. Grove Heights. That looks like we have the princesses from Ember Grove Heights. We have Hannah Litz, Felicia Busyman, Ashley Van Kempen, Grace Westfall, and Cheyenne Smith. Thanks for attending the Rice Street Festival all the way from the Heights of Ember Grove. So the parade route this year, Charlie, it looks like uh, the parade actually starts on Nebraska Avenue, if you're familiar with what that is. It's uh, actually north of, uh, north of Arlington, and the parade proceeds south down Rice Street all the way to uh, Sycamore Street. So it's a pretty healthy route. It's hard to see, but it looks like uh, the streets are lined fairly well here, so a lot of people came out today to watch the parade. Next here, looks like we have uh, St. Paul City School. Uh, it's a free charter school and it partners with families to prepare students to embrace their full potential and pursue high education. They have multicultural learning community, passion, uh, uh, passionately committed to the total development of every child. And they're handing out pencils today, Sean, not candy, but okay. pencils for the kids. And I see Woodbury, I see Woodbury coming down. Who do we have there, Charlie? Yeah, we have... Uh, Visit Woodbury Days, August 24th through the 26th. Woodbury Days is a fun, family fun filled weekend, the last weekend in August. Woodbury Days are represented by Miss Woodbury, Megan, Princess Essie, and Elena, M Little Miss Woodbury, Anya, and Little Princesses, Kennedy, Lucy, and Emma. Thanks for making the trip west to St. Paul here on Rice Street, Woodbury Days. Oh, yeah. A little bit of music, a little bit of dancing on their float today. Boy, I'll tell you what, Sean, these kids really, this is a this is an all summer event for most of these royalty from these oh, town you're, parades. And yeah, town you're not royalty. kidding, Charlie. A friend of mine had a daughter that uh, competed in the royalty pageants, and he said uh, they would they would attend anywhere from 20 to 30 parades every summer. That's 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 so taken up that's, all your it takes weekends. Takes a lot of time. Uh, now I see Community Action Head Start. Uh, it's uh, Community Action Head Start and Early Head Start. They offer services to family in Ramsey County with pregnant moms and children uh, from birth to five years old. 
So another one of those uh, great programs to help kids and give them some help or some resources that they might not ordinarily have. So again, an extraordinary amount of commitment for anybody that's involved and Definitely one of those jobs that, that you probably don't do for the money. You've got to have some passion and some heart and want to do the right thing and just help help kids out. And what do we have after, after the Head Start program? Looks like uh, tough to tell. Just have to see. Little, I see a bus, uh, a smaller here. school bus. Looks like it's fairly decorated. There's some kids handing out some candy. This is uh, Sean. The is this making make, it happen? Making it happen. The Montessori American Indian Child Care Center provides a high quality and early learning experience that embeds native language and culture into Montessori approach to learning. MAICC has been proudly serving the American Indian community for nearly five years. They're followed by the, there they are, the Farmington Ambassadors. The Farmington Ambassador Program is celebrating its 30th anniversary, and they exist to provide opportunities to young women and girls in the Farmington area. Ambassadors gain poise, speaking abilities, and community service experience during their time with the program. The ambassadors travel to share the Farmington story and goodwill. The program's intent is to teach skills that will be invaluable throughout their life. Uh, the 2018 Farmington Ambassadors are Miss Ambassadors Paige, Haley, and Caroline. The Junior Ambassadors are Ava and Lillianne, and the Little Ambassadors are Sophia and Callie. It's about a 30 minute drive from Farmington up to St. Paul, so thank you Farmington for coming out. Uh, up next we have the Republic Senate District number 65. Okay. Uh, we have- Part uh, of that uh, we've got Greg Ryan. And uh, Johnson for Governor in 2018. Following up the Johnson for Governor van, we have the Housley for U.S. Senate. Okay. And if you can probably hear them, I hear the St. Francis Drumline. Uh, they're compromised of St. Francis Band Program students, and they are thankful for the support of the St. Francis Band Boosters and the director. Let's take a listen. day there drum line we've got the uh, next we've got Elliot Nickel for Ramsey County judge and he is followed by uh, Elliot is uh, a proud oh, Ramsey County is. resident running in the next running to be your next Ramsey <laughs> County judge uh, it looks like they've got a wagon and I don't know what they're handing out but uh, there's some more candy And they're followed by the Rice Street Gardens. In 2016, the Rice Street Gardens was founded by volunteers from this very community that we're in now. Uh, and they provide plots for families to supplement their diets with fresh, organically grown vegetables. Uh, many Rice Street Gardeners are immigrants or refugees from around the world. So some of these uh, buildings that have been torn down or vacant lots that people drive by that sometimes just tend to collect trash or, or, or whatever else may blow into the weeds, uh, they'll actually turn that into a garden and turn it into something productive in the community. Great, great repurposing nice of property see. that would otherwise sit vacant. Following the Rice Street Gardens, we have the Cottage Grove Strawberry Fest. Uh, it's strawberry Fest, let's see if we can, uh, not quite sure when the Strawberry Fest is shot, but uh, we've got Cicely, not Miss Queen, we've got Miss Princess Tori Simmons, Junior Miss Queen, Gracie Reimer, Junior Miss Princess, Maria Helger, Little Miss Queen, Brooklyn Edland, and Little Miss Princess, Lola Ott. And they're followed by uh, G. Tony 
at wall for Ramsey County Judge. is going to be followed by following Health uh, Partners Regions Hospital. The old St. Paul Ramsey, having grown up in St. Paul, I think you're probably old enough to remember that, Charlie. Regions Hospital right down there at 640 Jackson. Make good happen. Make good happen. And I think that's the bookmobile, if I'm not mistaken from the St. Paul Public Library. The Bookmobile has been visiting neighborhoods across the city for over 100 years. The current Rice Street Library opened in 1998 to provide library services to the North End neighborhood. Today, it's a vibrant community space serving patrons from diverse backgrounds. The library provides a wide array of services, including book and media loans, computer space and programming, including story time and other children's events, family programs, teen programs, such as Tech and adult career education and technology assistance. As I mentioned before, Charlie, I go to many, many neighborhood community meetings on the North End, and, and most of them, they're, they're attended by representatives and staff from the library that are definitely committed into giving their output and doing whatever they can to, to help assist some of the youth and help them get books and things that they need. Sean, I think in this day of uh, technology, we kind of lose track of the fact that it's so important to read. I know. Me and my little guy, we read at least two books a night before bed. They're handing out fans here. Yeah, definitely take a fan as the temperature starts to climb. Is that Egan for Judge? I think we have uh, Gregory J. Egan. He believes in respect, equality, and justice for all, regardless of race, religion, gender, sexual orientation, or political affiliation. Greg is committed to service, community, and justice. He would be humbled and honored to have your support. Uh, Gregory J. Egan. Uh, going back to the library, Charlie, I know they, we had the kickoff festival at, right here at Rice Street Rec, and the library was a, a big part of that. They definitely they always set up tables with different crafts, uh, different activities for the kids, and uh, they're very committed to, to making things better and doing what they can in this area. Following up Egan for Judge, we have Calandra Revering. Uh, Calandra is also running for Ramsey County Judge. Good job, and they're followed by the uh, Legalized Marijuana Now movement. group in the parade. Definitely that's something that's happened in uh, several other states and uh, now Canada. I guess these folks are, are for that here. Here comes Susan. Susan Hendrick 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 sent uh, for Congress. She, she's asking for everybody to vote for her on November 6th. So again, no matter where your political affiliations lie, the, the strongest message we can send out is to make sure that you get out and vote. Get out and vote. She's Sarah followed Wellington for U.S. Senate. Looking for, uh, looking for a vote on November 6th. Followed by Dennis Schuler running for U.S. US Senate. And again, for the November 6th election. Stop in the action. Looks like the kids are really coming up for candy. Yeah, I can't tell what they're handing out, but I can tell people must like it because they are definitely a hit with the youngsters. They're trying to get right up to the vehicle with their with their candy and their goodie bags. Well, it looks like Flaherty for judge. Uh, it says the breath of Scott Flaherty's legal experience, paired with his passion for fairness and drive to make the law system serve people better make him the right choice for Ramsey County Judge. Right 
pickup truck. Looks like he's got some supporters alongside of him there. Their signs and their t-shirts. Okay. Uh, one of our comrades just thought it'd become up fun to come up behind us and uh, and uh, listen to the commentary, so I offered him a, a set of headphones and an ear, a mouthpiece to see if he'd like to be interviewed, and he, well, he shies away pretty shied quickly, away rather he? quickly. So that's all right, they'll let us have all the fun. This is just the, our first stop. Charlie and I plan on working our way into the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and hopefully the Rose Parade after this, if things go well. But uh, maybe if they we, don't go well. Maybe, well, if they don't go well, we'll just, this might be our, our first this and is, last this attempt. This is where we might be, but. Uh, following that uh, Flaherty for Judge, we have the first student transportation. Uh, first students here letting everyone know that they're always looking for good people to safely transport our children to school. So if you're looking for a job, I know the benefits are good and the pay's pretty good. They are, and if you're not looking for a job or you don't have any interest in trying to work for, for a student, just remember when you are outside driving, uh, school bus safety, and when you see that stop arm out, Definitely stop for the kids. Yeah, once, once the red lights start flashing, just stop. Coming, going. Is that uh, Jeffrey Martin, I think, for Ramsey County Judge, who's following uh, first student transportation. And he's followed by uh, Jerry Trurian for U.S. Senate. So you can definitely tell that it's going to be an election year, Charlie, with uh, all these candidates trying to gather support from the community. And that's Jeffrey Martin for District Court Judge. You can hear the ladies chanting. Yeah, he's definitely got a, a great group of supporters with him. And there's Jerry Troyan uh, for U.S. Senate. Following Jerry Troy in, we have uh, the Ace Auto Parts and Salvage. Longtime Rice Street business located off of Atwater and Rice Street. Uh, family owned and operated, has anchored the south end of Rice Street since 1929, and it's a longtime supporter of the, supporter of the north end community. Yeah, Ace Auto, Ace Auto Parts, definitely, they attend several of the meetings that I go to, and they definitely are huge supporters of the community. And uh, if you've never met Don, uh, the owner there, if you ever go there and watch him work, uh, he moves about 20 times faster than both of us put together, Charlie. He's got an incredible work ethic. I actually remember quite a while ago, uh, actually going to Ace Auto Parts when my 78 Nova broke down and I needed a new water pump. Uh, I went there with my dad and uh, we got a part and I brought that part home and he gave me a wrench and a hammer and a screwdriver and said, go at it. Where's that Nova today, Sean? Yeah, she's no longer with us, Charlie. It, uh, definitely got some miles out of it, but she's definitely no longer with us. So. And there they are, the folks from Ace Auto Parts. Well, if my itinerary is correct, Charlie, we have, uh, we may have maybe one more, one more group following Ace, and that's the, the 300 exclusive car club. This is kind of a fun group, Sean. They soup up these uh, Chrysler 300s and do all kinds of modifications on them. So not quite sure how many we're going to have today. I'll stand up and take a look, but it looks to be about a half dozen or so. Okay. They are kind of a, a flashy car. Yeah, they do have some nice cars. Can't imagine some of the money that goes into these cars to fix them up like that. A lot of chrome. A lot of chrome on those wheels. I, I don't know what those things cost. I can't imagine. I've, uh, sometimes it's tough for me to put gas in my car, Charlie, let alone uh, well, you know. to soup it up. But, but they do look sharp. And uh, again, it's, it's a great hobby. And I'm sure uh, these folks spend a lot of time. And I uh, imagine these cars are pretty important to them. If my itinerary is correct, Charlie, I think 
I, th I think following up the 300 car club, we just have the uh, trailing St. Paul police squads and the bikes. Going to be wrapping it up here for the day, Sean. Yeah, we sure will. So, so uh, want to thank everybody for coming out today. If you didn't come out, yeah, hopefully you for, get to see us on tuning in on the uh, St. Paul neighborhood network. Should be airing here soon. Definitely, and uh, I didn't want to. I wasn't. I wasn't going to bring it up right away but this Charlie this is our first this is our first attempt at anything like this this is our this is our debut Sean so, so hopefully hopefully it went well it's uh it's a little harder than you think I was at a meeting about six months ago and I was asked to do this and I kind of laughed and said yeah I'll do it I didn't think much more of it until I got an email about three months after that that uh, kind of gave me the time I needed to be here and and, and the program and uh, I thought well this is really happening I said well if you have somebody else let's let's ask them and uh, and I'll sit this one out while well, I didn't get that opportunity. So I want to thank Charlie for uh, being kind enough to assist me. Yeah. I guess I guess the biggest judge of this is do we get invited back next year? <laughs> We're gonna find out. <laughs> I told him. I said I said oh. if we did a if we did a great job, be sure to tell us. And if we didn't do a good job, just let us go. All thank right. you.